expansion graph. And now the recorder started. The floor is yours, uh, Chris. Okay, is my picture on the screen? We can see you, the video. Okay, I'm going to talk about this, this card, which is a VGA plugin interface for the VIC-20 computer. Okay, I've made some slides, so I'm gonna go through my slideshows. Um, let's get the... You see the fish in front of your screen then? <laughs> can, you, can you see the slides? No, I see the fish for the moment. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me get the slides. I had it yesterday. Share content, screen. Still the fish. Hmm. Share content. I want to share the screen. Mm, what's happening? Maybe when you click share content, you can also let, select normally the content. So either, either it's full screen or just uh, some specific content. Maybe we can. Uh, I share the screen. It should. No, still the fish. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now you're sharing screen. Perfect. We can see your tablet, uh, iPad, whatever it is. Yeah. So can you see that? VGA capability for VIC-20, yes. Okay, so I'll go through the slides. So this is the title slide. I'll talk a little bit about me to begin with. I graduated in 1984 and I have really been working in hardware and PCB coding and assembly for radio systems since that time. I moved on to ASIC programming in the late 80s, and then this slowly, slowly became an FPGA job. In 1992, I located to Southeast Asia in Singapore. And since all my children have grown up, I like to tinker around with things like keyboards, synthesizers, radios, embedded computers. And I kind of have fun designing, designing hardware and seeing it work. I chose the VIC-20 as a platform because it's like quite a simple architecture to work on. There's, no, there's not many custom trips inside it. And it was one of the first computers I fixed for a friend back in 1986. Over the past few years, things like prototyping, PCB, 3D printing have made doing home projects become much more financially enjoyable. You know, back in 1980, it really cost a lot of money to make a PCB, but now you can get one done in China for less than $50, even less than that. Anyway, I purchased uh, VIC-20 with the intention of using it as a music platform. And as the modern screens, you know, your big TVs and VGA screens, HDMI screens, do not have a composite TV input anymore, I thought, why not try making a VGA adapter and see if I can make it work? However, as I got further into further and further into this project, it became a very good learning exercise for video in computers. Okay, okay the hardware. Uh, I'm going to draw on my slide. The hardware is basically this, what you see on the right-hand side. You have, it's not allowing me to draw. On, on the bottom picture, you will see the four chips. These are basically two, four, five buffers, and they serve as a five volt to three volt three transition. And on the right-hand side, you see a small regulator. And then on the top picture, you'll see I'm using an FPGA plug-in card. So this is a diligent CMOD S7 FPGA card. I started off with a CPLD, the Mac, the Lattice Mac 20, but this really only came, contained enough logic cells to do a VGA interface, but not memory expansion and other things I had planned. So I moved to this, this card because it's, I had a few lying around in the office. 
So the VGA, VGA interface is basically a one bit channel, one bit per channel on red, green, and blue. And then I have two more channels to the horizontal sync and the vertical sync. So there are five signals going from this board to the monitor. And then for the edge connector, the VIP20 doesn't put out A14 or A15 onto the edge connector. It puts out block signals and other trip selects, but not signals which are useful for me. So for this board, if you look on the top picture somewhere in the middle, you'll see there's a little connector for A14 and A15. And this has to be connected into the VIC via cable or some kind of jumper. And this is the only caveat with this board. So the FPGA architecture, again, the FPGA I'm using is a CMOD S7. So this is a Spartan 7, and I'm using the Xilinx tools and VHGL to do the configuration to this FPGA. But I'm not going to talk about Xilinx or VHGL in this presentation. The right-hand picture shows the structure inside this FPGA. So you have a VGA driver. You have a VGA driver, which generates the H-Sync, vertical sync, red, green, and blue. And these are just one bit signals. We have three memories, one for the screen, which is 4K, 4K by eight, one for the color, which is 4K by eight, and one for the character map, which is 4K by eight. And the character map is the one from the VIX-20, so it's just an exact copy. Inside the FPGA, I have implemented these memories, so these are just static RAMs inside the FPGA, and they can be switched in or out via a register control. There's a UART, because I like designing my software on a PC, which has a much bigger screen, and then downloading it onto the platform, rather than keep transferring with an SD card. The design also contains the tone generator, and I'm using a PWM to output the signal. So this is a digital analog converter, which is then followed with an RC network to smooth it out. And inside this FPJ, there's also a sprite generator, which I'll talk about later in the slides. For the screen resolution, I have selected 800 by 600 high, 800 wide by 600 high and as each character in the character map is eight by eight pixels this is how i do the mapping i have four font sizes which can be selected so the largest font size will be a four by four and this can support a screen of 25 by 18. then the next font size is four by three which will is the normal boot up font which will give the vic 22 by 23 screen then there's a slightly smaller font, so you can get a bigger screen of 50 by 37 characters. And then finally, the smallest font, which is just a one-to-one -one pixel mapping of 80 by 51 characters on the screen. And on the right, I indicate the amount of memory needed to support each font size, if you're going to expand it to the maximum screen size. I have as I indicated earlier, there are two memories provided for the screen, one for color and one for hiding the characters, one for the screen and one for the color. So every single character on the screen can have one of eight colors. And there are three registers inside where you can set the font. I need to get it all back. So that's my screen resolution. Yeah, yes, yes, that, that, that one. Yes. Okay, unfortunately, it's all marked up. Okay, for the screen resolution, I have two memories of 4096 bytes, four kilobytes. And but one, one set is providing for the screen area and the second is providing for the color area. And with this memory, this will give you a maximum capability of 80 columns by 51 rows using all eight colors 
possible. Via three registers, the font size, number of columns and the number of rows, it was possible to set up any screen size from one by one all the way to 80 by 51. So there's a lot of flexibility. And entering parameters that cause the screen size to be bigger than what can be displayed will simply either cause a wraparound of information or for the information not to be displayed, but it won't affect the operation of the computer. So the computer won't crash. The screen can be mapped to these areas because the 4K for color and screen is 8K total. So it can be mapped to 2000, 4000, 6000 or 8, A000. And when you turn the hardware on, it's mapped by the VIC to 1E00 and 9600 for the unexpanded VIC or 1000 or 9400 for the expanded VIC. So th this is the screen and this is the color. And wherever you put the screen or color memory, it is fully read write. Okay, for the VGA scanning, there are five signals, the horizontal sync, the vertical sync, red, blue, and green. And this circuit only supports one bit VGA resolution. In the colored areas, so that's all these green, pink, light blue, dark blue, the red, green, blue signals are zero. They only have a zero or one value in the screen area, which is this white area. And in the dark blue area, which is this top one, H-sync signal is low, and in the dark green area, V-sync will be low. And scanning is basically from top to bottom, right to left, left to right, like this. Okay, the light blue red areas, which are that, 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 and that, these correspond to the front port, the back porch and front porch areas. So this is some timing in the VGA monitor where internal calibration or things are happening, but nothing is displayed during that time. And then the yellow area corresponds to the area outside of the video screen definition. And then I've shown the, how the screen is mapped for the normal VIC-20 boot up. Okay, the VGA pixel rate, if you, all these numbers in the table correspond to pixel timings. So for the horizontal sync, back porch, screen, and front porch, there are a total of 1040 pixels per horizontal line. And then for the vertical, there are 666 pixels. So the screen area is actually 1040 by 666, which is approximately 69,000 pixels, 692,000 pixels. And the screen refresh rate I've chosen is 72 Hertz. So this gives us a pixel rate of 49.87 megahertz. And I'm using a 50 megahertz clock and it seems to work. I haven't had any problems. Okay, the FPGA I selected, which is the CMOD S7, can drive its IO pins at this rate, but they can't go much higher due to resistor and diode protection circuits on that daughter board. And if I wanted to go for HDMI output, I would need to effectively multiply this rate from 50 megahertz to 400 megahertz, 50 times eight, 400 megahertz. So this is either going to be a much more expensive FPGA or I use a dedicated HDMI chip, but this is for next time. And this circuit I show, it works with both my Samsung and Dell monitors using this 800 by 600 by 72 hertz refresh rate. I didn't see a reason to expand beyond this capability as the VIC-20 658 6502 and 8-bit computers are not geared up for super high resolution graphics in multiple fonts. On this page, I talk about the backwards compatibility with the VIC trip, which is already inside the computer. 
this one is not directly compatible because the VGA doesn't need interlacing. This one is compatible, the number of columns and bit seven of the screen memory address is compatible, the number of rows and bit zero, which sets the eight by eight or 16 by eight character mode is fully compatible. The scan line is kind of compatible because the VGA vertical is to 666, whereas on the TV, Powell or NTST is going to be a different number. So it's kind of compatible. I have a counter there, but it doesn't, will not be the same as the, for, for the Powell or NCST formats. And the character map register, which is a 9005, and this is the most complicated register to understand in the Vic trip. This is compatible. I don't support the light panel or digitized panels. The sound generator is compatible and all the multi-color, multi background color are compatible. Even, even the multi-color mode in the graphics. For the character map, basic and kernel realms. For the VIC-20, these are mapped to 8000, C000 and E000. And in the VIC-20 computer, when these areas are addressed, they actually drive the data bus. So although my FPGA can mirror these areas, they can't be read-write because if you send an address to the character ROM, it's going to output its, that data onto the data bus. And I can't, you know, the, the 6502 is trying to drive it as well. You're going to get a bus contention and you get erroneous data written into the memory on my uh, VIC card. So I can't make these read right. I have to follow what the VIC 20 is doing. So these areas are kind of blocked. However, the character map by virtue of the VIC trip, the back character map can be shifted to other areas in the RAM region, 01, 00, the 01 FFF, which many games make use of. And my trip mirrors this area and it's read right. Okay, for my design, I have shown in videos on Facebook, I can get more colors than the eight colors of the victory, which are shown on this line. The position, the positioning for pixels on the VGA LCD LED is very precise. So it's possible to individually color each pixel. And now as the inter interface is one bit, alternating pixels can be configured to take on a different color or the same color. And what I found, it works well for the background and border with some combinations, say red and blue, cyan and blue. It works well, but with some other combinations, it doesn't look very nice. However, the characters, they're just limited to the eight colors in the palette. The chip also supports sprites. So inside the memory, 32 different sprite patterns are supported. Each pattern can be a 16 by 16 bit mapping. And it's written into an address space, 9C00 to 9CFF, which is the IO3 area. And sprites can only be, for this design, sprites can only be dual color, which is the pixel color and the background. So it can be one of the eight colors of the VIC-20 or black. And the data is right only because uh, once the data goes in, you, you can't read it. So you can't manipulate the sprites or read them back. It's only right only. And then the sprite screen, once the sprites are inside the memory, the sprite screen is independent from the character map and the VIC-20 screen. And it's 256 by 256 positions. 100 independent sprite patterns can be plotted from that palette of 32. And during the 
front porch and back porch intervals, which I showed earlier in an earlier slide, the sprite memory is updated. So you don't see the sprite memory updated when the screen is displayed. It's done during the off-screen off times. And then the sprite memory is mapped from 9C00 to 9D90, which corresponds to the IO2 area of the VIC-20. And you need four bytes. So you need the sprite number, the color, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate. And again, this memory is write only. And all the references are referred from the origin, which is top left. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. So are there any questions? We want to see a demonstration. I don't see any question yet in the chat box. I don't know if there are any, anyone with questions here in the audience. Otherwise, maybe I can just ask. Uh, then uh, you have uh, is 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 that documented somewhere? And you have a kind of website where it's uh, it's explained how how to build it again, a kind of cookbook, uh, how to build uh, the expansion card, or how how it has been built, and these kind of things. Um, there's no website. There's no YouTube presentation. There's no documentation made public yet. Okay, so, so this yeah. is the first time this is I'm, the first time it's been made public. Okay, so I noted the yet. So that means that now you have a new project uh, in front of you is to build a, <laughs> a mini website and, and 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 maybe document that. Uh, yeah, that would be nice, I guess. I just show this. So this is showing the hey, sprite. Hey. Nice. Going left to right. Mm -hmm. So each time it changes color. Change color. Oh. Good. And then I press a button on this and I can change the screen size. Yeah. So this is running on uh, that VIC 20. Yeah. It's up to normal size. Okay, so, so that's all I have. Yeah, that's that's nice. I don't see uh, I see some comments, but it's more like uh, yeah, more more comments. You can read it from uh, from the chat as well. I think looking at the time, uh, <laughs> we we are already one hour in total. We accumulated one hour delay, so I will stop the recording here. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, I want to answer a question Ryan made earlier. Sure. I have found that. The address line and the read write line change on the negative edge of the clock, SO2. And the data line changes on the rising edge of the clock, SO2. And these interactions are normally, you normally do them on the falling edge of SO2. But when you look at the timing, the address and the read write signal, this is from the 6502, change on the falling edge of SO2. And the data changes on the rising edge. Thank you. So this is something I've noticed. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for that. Uh, okay, I got again. Thanks. I stop recording now and. Uh...